Welcome back to the Believe in Badgers podcast on the Believe Podcast Network, presented by BetOnline.ag. Once again, I'm Matt Perkins, joined, as always, by Badger legend, the Hebrew Hammer himself, Matt Bernstein. Bernie, how are we doing today? That, again, it is every time we're you know on the podcast, it's a holiday. Um, we have someone absurdly special uh, from Wisconsin, which I'm not from, but I love more than anything. Um, I could read all your accolades. We have to do the podcast for five hours then, but two-time All-American holds the pole vaulting record, um, academic all big 10 honoree three years in a row. I mean, just so cool. Taylor Amin. I said it right. Amin. Yep. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, thanks for joining us. I mean, this is a special podcast because usually we bring in a lot of like old and I say old, but old football guys. Um, <laughs> so it's really a treat for both of us. I know I, I did track in high school and Matt was part of the team uh, back in the day. So thank you for being here and taking time. Yeah. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Yeah. yeah I mean, we are this, so this excited. This is awesome. <laughs> and especially because like my wife and I watched so much Ninja Warrior for like eight years it was like appointment television for us so and like oh, at, wow. at the at the peak of taylor's power so we know we'll get into that here in a minute I, you can't bet on ninja warrior because it's prepaid but you can bet on a lot of other things when you do so the best place to do is over at betonline.ag where they remain your number one source for all of your online sports wagering needs you name it they've got it at bet online nfl nba college basketball's uh, in full swing right now. It's over there at Bet Online. So head on over to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit with our promo code BELIEVE. That's B-L-E-A-V. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, Taylor, we will start here back at the beginning, way back in the beginning. Um, now, I know you went to uh, high school in Wisconsin, but were you born? Are you born and raised like purebred Wisconsin? Yeah, born and raised Wisconsin, still here. <laughs> but I love it. I don't know. It's, it's hard like, not to. I mean, Bernie and I are really. both from out of state, and we both like adore the state of Wisconsin. Yeah, especially in the summertime, it's just beautiful. It's beautiful, and you're in Milwaukee. I'm in Milwaukee now. Yeah. It's one of my favorite cities. Which is a cool little city. It's called Small Walkie, people say. <laughs> it is. Uh, Brady Street happens to be one of my favorite areas. To yeah, be that's a good spot. <laughs> Wait, so Taylor, I mu- I also miss that you are a three-time Big Ten champion. Yes, that too. I'm sorry. That should have been first. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I'm a zero-time Big Ten champion. So uh, that's super impressive. So let, let's talk about, like, what's, like, a little Taylor growing up? You went to Arrowhead High School? I went to Arrowhead High School. So bringing it back even further, I feel like my journey kind of began in gymnastics. So when I was four years old, my parents put me in gymnastics and that's kind of where I got my foundation and all my skill. I feel like, you know, like the body awareness, spatial awareness, flexibility, that kind of thing. So it started with gymnastics and then, yeah, I went to Arrowhead and I tried pole vaulting there. Um, had I hadn't heard of it before. My sister actually tried it she's three years older than me. She tried it when she got to high school, she was good at it. So I'm like, okay, like I'll try it too. And kind of clicked right away. Wait, I'm taking notes. Cause I have a 22 month old daughter. So oh, um, gymnastics go. is the gymnastics, way to, t- okay. Yes. Gymnastics. gymnastics sure. <laughs> um, she's a bit of a, a little bit for, you know, the basic skills too. Well, even so my, stuff. my roommate in college was a wrestler on the wrestling team at UW. Okay. And he was a, he started gymnastics at like two or three years old. And yeah. he said the exact same thing for him. It's what got him to being a, you know, UW wrestler was that body awareness and totally. like the body mechanics that you have to understand, uh, you know, to be a successful gymnastics, like all, all that good stuff. So I know yeah. that. And yeah, my, I feel like it's good for everyone, honestly. Yeah, absolutely. Adult gymnastics is taking off too. I've heard like a lot of people, there's opening like a lot of like adult gymnastics clinics all over the country. Um, so I think that's really fun too, but yeah. Bernie, maybe you and I can go to a gymnastics. Clinic yeah. Listen, I need all myself. the flexibility I could get <laughs> right now. Um, but tell her, so I, so like, uh, 
what sports did you play when you were growing up? Gymnastics? Were there other sports? Because picking up a pole vault is not like a normal kind yeah, of thing to do. <laughs> it was honestly just gymnastics. Um, I dabbled in a little bit of dance, like to get, you know, skill for my floor routines and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, I, I didn't do any ball sports. Like I'd play around at my house or my friend's houses, but I just did gymnastics. So what makes you join the, the track t- team? Well, yeah, I was going to say, well, do you think the tumbling, like learning how to tumble for gymnastics was something that helped you with pole vault? Honestly, pole vault's pretty full body, just like gymnastics, you know, like the run. So like in vault and gymnastics, similar to pole vault, the runway, um, the short approach run. And then, you know, you plant the pole and it's kind of, you jump and then it's like core and then it's like pulling your body. It's, it's very similar. Like it seems like drastically different, but it's, it's pretty similar using pretty much the same body parts, which is like everything, all your muscles. So it did translate really well somehow. (laughs) Well, no, that like, that makes perfect sense. Like all of that like makes perfect sense when you think about it. Were you doing any other events besides pole vault in high school? I did a little bit of sprinting, um, just, you know, training for pole vault, like the short approach run. But other than that, no, I mean, I tried high jump. I tried long jump like here and there, but I I was just good at pole vault. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to stick to this, see where this goes. I just, cause I was a, a track coach at one point at a high school and I didn't even know we had the pads for pole mm-hmm. vault, like the actual pole vaults and pads and people would pick it up. Literally. I just watched. I thought it was so cool. I have no coaching points because I don't, <laughs> I don't, you know, I, I'd break the pole vault if I, if I grabbed one, <laughs> but so you pick it up in high school. Like, mm-hmm. what's your first time running down with the stick? Like, what's planning it? Like, what's I don't know anything about this. It's pretty gradual. Like, it's not like I just grabbed the pole and I ran and stuck it in the, okay. the box. And, like, it, it didn't happen like that. You know, you start by just kind of holding the pole and doing the motions, just standing there. And then soon after that, you do like a two step run. So just literally planting the pole, not even jumping. Like, it's very gradual. Um, so the first time I actually did it, it wasn't anything crazy. Like, you know, I started at probably like four feet, right? Like, so you're really just lifting your body over the, the bar at that point. So it wasn't, it wasn't crazy at first. Like it was pretty gradual. What's like a training regimen like to get good at this? Um, little sports. Sprints, um, I mean, gymnastics, like that was a huge help with training, um, abs, like lifting. Um, and there's a lot of drills involved too, which are pretty important. Um, there's standing drills, there's sitting drills, there's just all types of drills you can do. That is, it's very fascinating. (laughs) And so were you then you were competing in gymnastics in the track off season, right? You were still staying active in gymnastics. Yeah. So so I stayed in gymnastics until end of junior year in high school. So I quit senior year just to focus on pole lock because I knew I was already going to college for it and I didn't want to get hurt. So, so, so you already knew you were coming to Wisconsin before your senior year? Yes, I think so. Now what was the recruiting there. process? What was the recruiting process for you like? I mean, like, was it always for you? Like, were you, was your heart set on Wisconsin since you were young? Did you like check out other schools? Like, what was that whole process like? Yeah, I started getting letters actually my freshman year. Freshman and sophomore year, I started getting letters from schools. Uh, nothing serious, you know, just, hey, like, we see that you're doing well. Like, we're interested in talking, that kind of thing. Um, and then junior year, I started getting more, um, and I don't know, I'm, I'm a homebody. So I, I didn't really put much thought into it. I knew I was going to go to college and I figured, okay, I'm going to pull vault in college, but I didn't, I didn't really think of any schools besides like lacrosse, Wisconsin. Like I was looking at Wisconsin schools, um, Minnesota too. Um, Oh, never heard of them. I I know. I'm kidding. I'm joking. (laughs) Yeah. But like I said, I'm a homebody, so I didn't want to go too far. I didn't really consider anywhere else. I didn't take visits anywhere else other than lacrosse, Wisconsin, Minnesota. Wait, so when, when does, when does like, um, when do you know in your mind, like I'm going to do this in college? Um, I think 
when I really started getting good, um, I started winning meets. I started, you know, hearing from a lot of different college coaches. I'm like, okay, like this is definitely happening. Like they were expressing their interest. And, um, I knew some other girls that like one of my good friends, she went to Minnesota to pull vault. So I, I was kind of watching her go through the process and I'm like, okay, like I could do this too. Like it was really cool. Like, that's great. And so, so you had Wisconsin lacrosse, Minnesota's on the board. Do 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 track and Matt Perkins? Don't judge me, but do track <laughs> individuals get like a, a um like a hosted of like do you come tour the official visit campus? Yep, uh, do you take visit. an official visit? Yeah. Yep. So I did those three those three schools. Um, I I kind of thought I was going to go to lacrosse at first, but then I started getting better and better, and I was kind of like looking at the numbers. I'm like, okay, if I go here, I'm just going to win everything. Like, what's you know what's the point of that? So then it was down to Wisconsin and Minnesota. And I had a really tough time picking between the two. Like it was kind of like one day, like I wasn't really talking to my family about it. I'm kind of, I was very torn. And one day I just decided, I don't even know why or how I came to this decision, but I called Minnesota or actually, I think I called Wisconsin first and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm decided I'm coming here. Um, And I didn't even really choose it in my head. It was kind of just like, I pick up the phone and I decided like it was, it was pretty tough for me, but I'm super happy with my decision. (laughs) Well, do you, do you have family that went to Wisconsin or, or Minnesota? Do you have, I don't No. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. So that makes the decision a little bit tougher. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh, wow. What was like being closer to home? I mean, you've said you're a homebody, right? So was that one of the factors in your decision? And then Second follow up to that, like, what was your official visit like? Like, this is, you know, we, we ask all the football players. I want to know from you, though, like, what is what was your because I walked onto the track team. And so I didn't ever got anything. I went with my dad to just like meet Coach Nuttycomb before, like, before yeah. I got there. But what it was your, you know, what what's an official like for track? Because I've, you know, never really talked to anyone about that. Yeah, they were both super fun. Uh, when I visited Minnesota, though, it was freezing cold, like brutal. So that could have had an effect. But I did really love the team dynamic. I loved the coaches. Um, everything else about it, I really did love. Um, and then Wisconsin, I think it was summertime when I visited. So we went to a game and it, like all of that was great. But the team aspect wasn't quite like Minnesota. I think like Minnesota team appeared like closer and they had like a pole vault specific coach where at Wisconsin they didn't. Um, I don't know. Like, I, I really don't know how I came to my decision, but yeah, super happy with it. Well, I think everyone at Wisconsin is super happy about it too. Yeah. Everyone in Minnesota is super upset, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. And my mother-in-law went to uh, Minnesota. So okay. I always say I'm sorry to her, but not really that sorry because mm-hmm. it's, it's Minnesota. Yeah. Um, wait, so what, so what's an official visit? Like you show oh. up, you're 18 or 17, 18. Mm-hmm. Like, do you do wild things like this track? I, I've hung out with track people in college. They were wild. It might have just been that group of people that I hung out with. Yeah. What's what's the official visit like for you? Yeah. So they put me up in a hotel. Um, they show us the facilities. Uh, we grab lunch and dinner with the coach and some of the athletes um, at Wisconsin. I went to a pregame with some athletes, uh, went to the game, um, a party after. So like, I guess Wisconsin was a little more crazy than Minnesota. Like I didn't go any to any tailgates or anything at Minnesota. I didn't go to any parties with the team. Like mm-hmm. I didn't do any of that. I think they were both pretty chill though. Um, it was really just kind of getting a feel of what it's like to be on the team. How many people are part of that? the official visit. Is it just like 10 people, five people? They were, it was just me and my parents. And then I was with like two of the pole ball girls. So they really like kind of rolled the red carpet out for you. Yes. Yes. That's awesome. Did you, what, did you get to stand on the field for the game? I did. Mm-hmm. Wow. How, yeah. how was that experience? Awesome. I mean, have you been to a game before? I hadn't. No, no. So that wow. was really a cool experience. Your first experience is standing on the field at a football game. Yep. <laughs> like, and I must, did we win? Yes, we did. I can't <laughs> remember who we were playing though, honestly, but yeah. 
That is so cool. Mm -hmm. Wow. I'm jealous of your official visit, although mine wasn't so bad either. (laughs) Um, So, but did you, you decided before this, that Wisconsin was your place? Before the visit? Yeah. No. Oh, okay. I took these visits and I still was not sure. Wow. Um, Actually, the Minnesota pole vault, actually, sorry, it wasn't even the pole vault coach. The Minnesota throws coach came, he drove like, what is it? Five and a half, six hours from yep. Minnesota to Wisconsin, to um, Heartland, where I was from. Um, he drove that like three different times to come watch me at club practice. Like he went all in. Right. Wow. Yeah. Um, but ended up choosing Wisconsin, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. do you, do you think that that like, does that, like, looking back, it probably tells you something, but in the moment, do you, f- do you feel like, like, you're like, wow, it gives you like a little confidence boost. And you're like, man, I could really go and do these things at a big time university. Yeah. It was a really cool feeling, especially, you know, being at this club practice with my friends and having these coaches just show up and watch me. Like that was so cool. I, I, I had a coach come to a basketball game I was playing in and it was Awesome, like a Wisconsin coach, and it was awesome. Scary though, because yeah. like you're like I got to really, yeah, I really got to do good today. <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't good at basketball, so I felt I'm like I hope he doesn't take it back. <laughs> I think this was too late because I already signed. But um, wait, that's I, so so so. What's this club experience like? Because I feel like club sports, if you're uh, if you're an excellent athlete, is something you have to do almost today. Is that something like you j- wanted to jump into your parents? Like you should do this. What, what was that experience like? I'm trying to think how I got into that. Um, I think I met a girl during some camp I did one summer and she was going to this, um, it was called get vertical, um, okay. club. She went to, and I'm like, Oh, I've never heard of that. So I went with her the following Sunday. So it was only on Sundays. Um, cause this was during high school. I was in gymnastics. Um, so I would just really only have time on Sundays. Um, so my dad would take me every Sunday cause he loved to just sit there and watch. Um, and it was like just a ton of drills. It was actually at a gymnastics gym and they built a pit or they had a pit and they built a, a box so we could actually jump, but we'd jump barefoot because it was on a gymnastics floor. So it was a little different, but it was super fun. Like they had plenty of stuff for drills, like ropes and bars and all that stuff. So you mentioned camps. Did you go to pole vaulting specific camps? Cause you seem like yes. you're, you did a lot of extracurricular, if that's like yeah. the right term uh-huh. outside of track is how important was that? for you. And, you know, like you're seeing people like kids kind of specialize in things. Is yeah. that, I mean, I feel like pole vault is, is a, is a specialized. It's event. a specialization within a specialization. Yeah. Right? Like you have to be yeah. really special to do that. It was really important to do that because practicing at high school, it's like, I was the best one or one of the best ones. Like I, I would be training with girls that are jumping like, you know, five feet. So it's like, I don't get enough time on the runway. They're not taking it as serious as I was. So these, these camps and these clubs were super important because these girls and guys wanted to go somewhere with it. Like they took it really seriously. They wanted to be good. Um, practice wasn't just, I mean, it was fun, but it was like, we were all focused and that was super important to have that in addition to just high school practice. Yeah. It's like, it's that competition that sort of, you know, makes you better and be like, Oh, cause I mean, Right. I'm sh- I'm sure, you know, you, you, with something like even football, Bernie, like, you know, you were like so dominant, right, a- as a high school player. And so oh, thank you. And, you, well, you were <laughs> you were like the, you were the best player in the state of New York. Like, you know, maybe there was some good there were some really good guys. You won the but high school. I, I would have been a chump at Arrowhead, though. <laughs> well, so, but you, you know, you, you think about like how much better you had to get like during that redshirt year. Right, Burn? You know, right. ju- yes. just to get up to speed. I feel like if you're doing what Taylor is doing you know, doing that extracurricular stuff, you are quicker getting up to speed at the collegiate level. Did you find that to be the case? Are you asking me? Yeah, I'm you- sorry, I'm Taylor, I'm asking you. Did you find <laughs> it like, <laughs> sorry, Taylor, I'm asking you. Well, like, I feel you- like you have to compete with the elite who are taking the sport seriously. Yes. Out, you know, like I was a shot putter. I threw my last year, I threw 55 
the next person on my team threw like a 39. Yeah. So, yeah. so the competition in that respect is, you know, they're so your friends and they're your, your people, yeah. but like, they're not pushing you to like hit the gym right. harder and right. do yeah. another ab. Yeah. Yeah. And like high school meets, I would be winning them. Okay. And then these club, um, these club meets or these, um, summer camp competitions, I wouldn't be winning because there's people better than me. I'm, you know, I'm training with people that are taking it seriously. And yeah, I'm really happy that I did all that extra Wait, stuff. So I, I think that's really important now is the, the perseverance, right? Like mm -hmm. that takes a lot to go to like from a high school meet to, to win and pretty much go in and like one to go in and know you're going to win, but then to do it is, yeah. a, is, is extremely hard. What, what was that mindset like? And like, what can you, like, if you gave advice to some kid who's doing the same thing and like they're dominant in high school, but then they go to a club meet and they're not winning. Mm -hmm. What is that? What's that like in your brain? Yeah. I mean, it was definitely tough at first, I feel like, but it's also, you know, it's a confidence thing. Like these high school meets, okay. I was winning them. Like, I know I can do it. And then I go to these bigger club meets and it's like, okay, like there's people that are better than me, but like, I can, I, I have the potential too. you know, like I kind of like look up to them. Like, it's good to look up to people regardless if they're, you know, younger or older, like if they're doing something more or better, like it's, it's nice to have people to look up to. Um, so I think that was a big piece of it and just, yeah, confidence, like just trusting your abilities. Like I knew that I, I knew I was going somewhere. I knew I could do it. So like, why not a little bit further each time, a little bit higher. So I have one more question that has nothing to do with Wisconsin. You okay. mentioned your parents and that your yeah. dad would drive you to places. Yes. What's that support? Like what, what was there? Like in the time you probably don't really care that they're doing all these things, but as looking back, like how influential were they and how supportive were they? So supportive. Like they went to literally everything. Like they both work so much, but they were always at competitions. They were even practices. Like my dad would be at everything, which just like means the world, mm -hmm. honestly. Yeah. Does your is your dad like a professional pole vault coach now? Honestly, he probably could. <laughs> <laughs> he could probably he could probably pole vault himself, honestly. And now Ninja Warrior, which yeah. we, we <laughs> that's because I watch all the videos, you know, they're either on Zoom or they're there. Uh -huh. That's that's so cool. I mean, they must be so proud. They are. They yeah. Are oh, biggest fans. yeah. So so let's so let's jump in. Like you get to Wisconsin, right? Your your day one, you show up when it's, I mean, in September, September, August, end of August, September. Yeah. And is there, is there indoor fall track or is there, it's just winter and spring so or there's fall practice right away. And then there's an indoor season, which started right after Christmas break, actually during Christmas break practice started. Okay. Um, and then meets started right up in January. So that's considered indoor season. And then indoor season goes until I want to say March and then it's outdoor season. Got it. Okay. Well, I guess that makes sense because freeze is it freezing in the beginning of the season in outdoor? Yeah. It could it be. Has it ever snowed when you pole vaulted? Uh no, I've I've never pole vaulted in the snow, but we would we had an indoor facility. Um, and then we would go to meets in like California, Arizona. Oh. So we were pretty spoiled with awesome competition locations. <laughs> Yeah, I would have going to California seems pretty awesome. Yeah, and many times too. That was like one of our most frequent places. Uh yes, I am jealous of you. <laughs> I used to tape uh my ear holes up because it was so cold that I didn't want the wind to come in. Um wait, so is so in 2015 was your first season. It from from reading literally the book on how amazing you did in, in your time here, you placed in the indoor and outdoor. As a freshman? So my first ever meet, it was indoor at the Shell in Madison. Mm -hmm. um, I won. Like my first first meet, I won. And I got a, a PR, like a huge PR. What was, was like, the PR? So I got, what was I? 12, six in high school. I got 13 feet my first meet. Whoa. And that must have been like, huge. Like a massive, that's massive. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. 
oh, I did that. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I won this college meet. I'm like, like I was feeling real good after that. And so what does it, what does it feel like? So, I mean, after that, you definitely had the confidence to be like, I can do oh, this. Yeah. 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 What, you, I mean, six inches is huge in, in, in any track. throwing, any field, field, any, any field of any that that's massive. Yeah. Um, I have a question has maybe nothing to do with this. Are you afraid of heights? Yes. I so am. am I, how do you do it then? Insane. It's very interesting. <laughs> um, I think it's different because, you know, I'm holding onto a pole. I have control of my body because of this pole. Yeah. And then there's a big pit. So like, I don't know, for some reason, pole wall did not scare me, but I am afraid of heights. I, I just feel like, well, you, you're also not kind of looking <laughs> down. You're looking That's up. That's true. And honestly, <laughs> I feel like my eyes were closed half the time. Like, I don't even know what I was looking at. So I don't know. It's very interesting. To think you just about. become so, um, I guess like your training regimen, you get so like locked into your technique yeah. that you probably could do it with your eyes closed. Probably. Yeah. I would be scared out of my mind that yeah. like, I'll drop the pole. I'll get up to the top and not even land in the pit. Right. The There's pole, so the, much that could go wrong. <laughs> so much. Uh, the, that the thing you jump over with the stick, you jump over, that's not the right term is going to come down and, and hit me. I, like, yeah. I have all these ridiculous fears and it probably I mean, doesn't they matter. happen though. They do happen. Like, what, if was, happen? what, what was the hardest you ever got hit by, uh, by the bar? Oh yeah. 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 So 21st birthday, I was pulled. Wait, what bar are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> dad joke hashtag dad joke okay oh, yeah. sorry keep going <laughs> yeah so on my 21st birthday we had a home meet which was awesome um i was doing super well and then one of my jumps i i i swung up and i kicked the bar off before going over it so i kicked it off on my way up so it landed before i did oh no so then the bar landed i came down smacked my head on it i got a concussion which i didn't know at first because I, I got right up and I'm like, okay, like I'm fine. My coach was telling me, you know, certain things to change. And I like, wasn't listening. Like I was starting to like, feel weird. Like I finished the meet. I won the meet. It was fine. But then later that night I was like, there's something wrong with me. Like I feel off. Like <laughs> So that was like, actually like my worst injury. Like that was the only injury I had in my pole vault career is that one, wow. concussion, which is like, amazing. Like, I don't know how, and even gymnastics too. Like I didn't really have injuries. So well, that, well, you are literally a, a, a warrior ninja. So like, yeah, it makes, it, it, makes it does make sense now. <laughs> it does make sense. Wait, so does it hurt to hit the pad too? No, no, no I'm pretty soft. I'm so glad we're doing this. Cause now all my fears are alleviated about <laughs> like anything coming off. Like what you, your best was over 14 feet. 14, three and three quarters. So you're, it's, you're falling from basically like uh two stories. Yeah. Yeah. Into like this little mat that you're just so comfortable with. It's a pretty thick mat. Yeah. It's pretty soft. It's got a, a, a lot of respect. When you're in high school, like they would leave the mat out if it was like nice. And like, that's because we had, like when you had an off period in my high school, we would just go lay on the pole vault mat for an hour and just oh, yeah. talk. That yeah. was like also our true. favorite place to congregate. Nice little spot. To hang out. <laughs> Get a little sun. It is a nice yeah. little spot. Oh, absolutely. Um, Get some sun. So after the 2015 season, you now know you're like, I can do this. This is like, like I'm getting there. What's it like? I mean, you grew a foot and f from your first meet to where you PR at a foot and three and a, a half inches. That's a lot. Yeah. What? How does that happen? Honestly, like it's a lot of, you know, obviously the training and the drills, it's like the mindset too, like just trusting myself and knowing what I can do. Like I was super, um, consistent throughout my whole career of pole vaulting, super consistent. And I progressed like each meet really, like it was, it was awesome. So it's, it's kind of like my mindset and just being confident and like, kind of visualizing it beforehand, like just knowing I can do it. And then I just go do it. Like, I think that's a huge piece of anything is like the mindset. Did you do any sort of mind specific training for lack of a better term? Um, I, 
did a lot of the visualizing before competitions. You know, I would just close my eyes and picture every step. I'd picture the run I'd picture the plant I'd picture myself going over the bar. Um, a lot of that. And then just positive thinking. Like, that's just like a huge thing in all you, aspects of life too. I feel like just well, where do you get that positivity from? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think like practice too. Cause I don't think I had that at first. Um, even freshman year, like, yeah, I was doing well, but I, I don't think I had quite that, you know, that mindset right away. Um, but that grew over time. Did anyone and, like guide you to say like, Hey, visualize what you're doing, or you just started to do that on your own. Someone told me, and I can't think right now who like started that. I think it was one of my coaches, one of my club coaches, maybe, mm. um, kind of told us to start visualizing, but yeah, it's smart. I'm glad it is smart. I was told that. Wait, wh- I, where did you live your four years on campus? Yeah. So I lived in Dijop freshman year right. and then I lived in, um, embassy sophomore year. Aberdeen junior year, City View senior year. So I moved, oh, you moved all over the place. Yeah, yeah. I like to change it up. <laughs> Matt Perkins, did you stay in the same place? Uh, I stayed my senior year and then my super senior year, I was in the same house. And between my junior year and senior year, I moved like I went from my dress went from 207 and a half North Francis Street to 207 North Francis Street. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure your mail did not ever show up. Honey. No, um, it, it, it didn't. But luckily, we, <laughs> we, we, we befriended the people who t- moved sure. into 207 and a half North Francis after we got zero dollars of our deposit back. <laughs> well, because, well. yeah. It's um, when uh, it's funny. In I got I, so, so Tara, I showed up to campus in 2001 with two huge duffel bags. Cause I didn't have, you didn't have a cell phone. I have a computer <laughs> and they put you at the towers, which is right on Francis. Mm-hmm. But then in, once the towers is over, the football team's like, dude, just, you got to find where you're going to live for the summer. They're like, but the region is where you're going to live the next year. I'm like, what do you mean? I have to find this. You're uh, supposed to be taking care of me. Well, I don't <laughs> know what to do. So all these dudes, we just found this dumpster of a house. Oh, um, and for like two months I had to live there. And then the same thing the year after. So you moved around four years. I think I moved into six different places. Could that be Gosh. seven? Cause I was there for five years. Wow. Yeah. I actually loved it too, though. Yeah. I, liked I like it. to change it up. I obviously moving is a hassle and a half, but <laughs> it's nice to switch up the environment a little bit. Oh, totally. Did well, you have it, a scooter? It helps change your mindset too. Oh yeah. Do you say scooter? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I had a moped for sure. Nice. Yeah. Oh, that's why I love that. <laughs> I didn't have uh, it freshman year though. I was honestly like too scared to bring it. I had it at home, but I was too scared of like the Madison streets, like all the one ways. Like I was like, I'm gonna do it wrong. Like I was just nervous at first. <laughs> I, listen, it, it's uh, I got my first scooter there, and, and my only scooter. And uh, you're totally right. No, we didn't wear helmets, like no. nothing. No. No. I don't know how smart but that I, is, but come winter, I got a helmet, like a full face helmet because you need it. Yeah. <laughs> it's so cold. Like I got it because it's cold, not because, you know, protect my head. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know. Well, speaking of helmets though, helmets, you know, I know when I, when I burned, when we were in high school, you know, I never saw, I've started seeing like pole vaulters wearing helmets. Yeah. Now. That was a thing. It was required. Yeah. Yeah. Was, so wow. did you ever, so you wore a helmet when you, did you ever have to wear a helmet when you vaulted? So the law ended, I think my freshman year or the year okay. before it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'd never had to. Okay. That's really that would make sense. Maybe a practice, but not like, right. Well, you did I have mean, a head injury. Yeah. <laughs> I only know one professional athlete that wears one. Like she's the only girl, the only person I've ever seen wear a helmet <laughs> like these days, but so kind of interesting. That is interesting. But Tara, what was your life like on campus, like outside of athletics? Yeah, I mean, like what 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 is what is Taylor doing when she's not like training or competing? Yeah. So I was a fashion retail major. Um, I really wanted to end up, you know, as a buyer in product development, like something in fashion. So I took my major pretty seriously. I went to a lot of networking events when I had time. Um, the retail program had like every Wednesday night, some professional or some company come in and speak to us. And I'd always go, I'd always, you know, ask questions and go up 
afterwards and get their contact info. And, um, and then also, you know, hanging out with friends, like I was very social on campus, um, just always had a lot going on. Did you hang out with a lot of the football players? I didn't No, I knew a lot of them, but I didn't really hang out with many. of them. Those are the guys that can help move you know, apartments very easily. Yeah, that's true. Maybe I should, uh, <laughs> we used to stand, or, I used to stand in front of, uh, during move in, cause we'd already be there, uh, in front of the sororities and some dad would be like, Hey, can you help me move? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, this yeah, is exactly yeah. what I'm here for yeah. and get 20 bucks and then be like, man, this is great. I'm rich right now. Um, <laughs> so you took, so you, you took school seriously. Mm-hmm. Like, is there anything like do you have any teachers you absolutely adored? Did you have like any influential, like um, outside of sports people that you're like, wow, the, this person really helped me in my development? Yeah, there were a few professors in my program that I really liked. Um, and I kind of saw them as mentors and they would help me, you know, find internships and that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, it was really good to have, you know, my my athletics connections and then outside of there as well. Cause there's a lot within the athletic department too. Like a lot of mentors, a lot of help, a lot of resources. And so then while, while you're on campus, you also get involved in Ninja Warrior through the, the collegiate Ninja Warrior. So how did yeah. that sort of come about? Yeah. So that happened after my sophomore season, um, two guys from Wisconsin reached out to me. I didn't know them. I knew of one of them, but I didn't know the other guy. Um, and they're like, Hey, like we're, we want to do this college Ninja warrior competition. Um, it's two guys, one girl from each team. Like we're looking for an athletic girl. Would you be interested? And I was like, I mean, yeah, that sounds awesome. I've never watched the show. I've never obviously trained for it or anything like that, but I'm like, sure. Like I didn't even really know these guys and I'm like, yeah, I'll do this. So the show flew us out. And we ended up winning the whole competition, which is just like, so unreal. Cool. I didn't even train for it. Like, obviously I came right from the pole vault season and I did really well. So like, I guess a lot of that translates well into Ninja as well. So mm-hmm. that helped me, but yeah, I didn't even train for it. And we win this whole thing. So what, what, what do oh, you sorry. think translated most for you? Um, uh, I'd say like the endurance aspect and then also um, you know, hanging on things, swinging from thing to thing. Obviously that's not exactly like pull vault, but it's very much gymnastics. Um, and then like, you know, core strength, grip strength, grip is huge. You know, like holding the pole, having to hold on to the pole while you're going up and over the bar. So that, yeah, I mean, a lot of it was super helpful. <laughs> so these are like, so two random guys where they were on sports teams at Wisconsin. So one of them was a wrestler. He was mm-hmm. in, in the graduate program, but he was on the wrestling team. Um, and then the other one, he was just like a climber. Like he's been an athlete his whole life, but he wasn't on um, a team at Wisconsin. And so what do you tell your coach when you're like, hey, I'm going to go do yeah. this thing in California? Like they must have been like, hell no. So I needed a lot of approvals, uh, like from compliance from coaches. I needed so much stuff. Um, and they're all like, wait, that sounds awesome. Like they're all super supportive about it. That's really it. cool. I would not that expect cool. that. I would I would not expect no. that. I mean, obviously my coach was like, okay, don't get hurt, but like, yeah. you can do it. <laughs> like have fun. But that's yeah. really cool because our coaches didn't want us to play intramural basketball. Yeah. Or I mean, get on a motorcycle or any of that. Stuff. Be, I think normally, but yeah, I was lucky. Wait, so okay, so what's the experience like you get you're on a, I mean, you're flying to California, you're mm-hmm. with these two randoms. Yeah. And, uh, well, they're all Wisconsin guys. So that's, that's pretty cool. And right. you're literally like, what happens when you get off the plane? Got off the plane. And then we had a driver pick us up, take us to our hotel. Um, and then walk into the lobby, a bunch of, you know, early 20 sums from different mm-hmm. schools. Um, and then it was actually like pretty quick. Like, I think that day we went right to, um, the filming location. And we did like B roll, we did interviews, like we did a lot of that stuff. And then that night we started filming. Um, and our team was doing so well. It was like, we would, they kept calling. They're like, team Wisconsin, you're up. Okay. We'd go. And then like 
two minutes later, team was constantly like, we were just like running around, like didn't have time to even like eat anything, like let alone drink water. Like it was just so quick, the whole experience. Cause and I then think what, the next day you like fly out. Yeah. We were only there for like two days, I think. Wow. Yeah. And some schools got there earlier. So they got like a filming location the day before, and then they got to run again the next day. Ours was all like just back to back to back to back. Like we got flown there last for whatever reason. And you still won. And you I still-, still won. And I didn't even touch the water once. Like <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure I was the only girl that didn't fall in at some point. So is that, is that the time that said like, I want to maybe do this after, or did you consist, did you keep going in Ninja Warrior after while you were still in college or was it just like this is one one off so i was 20 at the time filming for this i think you still had to be 21 was like the minimum age to do regular ninja warrior um they changed that now i think but um i was 20 so i kind of knew i couldn't do the normal show yet and i was also like still in school they only mm-hmm. did this college edition one time this was like a one-time thing. And it was different because it was a relay instead of... Yeah, it was just, yeah, it was very different. Um, cool experience, but I didn't really think anything more. Like I didn't, mm-hmm. like I was kind of just focused on pole vault. Like I knew that was going super well. Um, so then I graduated in 2018 and then Ninja Warrior called me and they're like, hey, like, would you like to be back on the show? Like, we'd love to have you. And I was like, honestly, like, I don't know, like... I think I said no the first time. Um, I just like, I don't know. Like I, I just graduated. Like it was kind of nice, like just taking time off, like not having to like train for anything the first time in forever. Um, but then they called again in 2019, um, for season 11. And I was like, you know what? Like, sure. Like I'll do it. So I went on the, the regular show, um, the experience was kind of horrible. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, did you did but, you train? Wait, did you train so up to that point? No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> when I was working out, but I, I didn't train for because I just wasn't taking it seriously. Like mm-hmm. they called me and that was super cool because a lot of people like apply every year and don't get calls back. Like they called me. Like I didn't even apply. So that was cool. Didn't really train for it. Just, you know, did my normal lifts. Um and then I get out there, the experience, it was like, okay, I'm trying to think now where oh, Oklahoma city is where it was Oklahoma city in early April freezing. They filmed during the night. Okay. So my call time was like two thirty three in the morning, freezing cold, like I'm starving. I didn't know anything about it. So I didn't know that you had to bring your own blankets. You had to bring your own seats to set up. We were on, we had like a concrete slab that like, we're just like expected to sit on. Like, I didn't know to like bring stuff. I didn't really bring like food, like (laughs) all that stuff. So so I do my first run and I made it super far. Like I, I think I got first or second of all the women. So then I advanced to the next night. So I had to change my flight home to stay another day. And I advanced again. And I like come to find out I made it to Vegas. Like I literally made it to Vegas, like my first time doing it. And like, part of me was like, oh my gosh, I have to do this again. Like this experience was like kind of brutal. Um, but I mean, looking back, like, it's so fun. Like the people you meet just like the whole experience. Yeah. Like it was cold and I was hungry and tired and all that, but overall, like super cool. So are you, have you been training for it since? And like, what kind of training can you do for it? Yeah. So after that season, so after that second night, when I advanced to Vegas, we had like, I want to say two or three weeks. So I trained hard in those two or three (laughs) weeks. Um, and then also, so I did season 11, 12 and 13. I did train for season 12 and 13. So like when I got the call, I would just train super hard for it before going out. Do you have a coach? Like who's, who helps you? You just go to like some random gym. So there's some ninja gyms around there's, um, Midwest twisters in Heartland, my hometown, which is, it's kind of a smaller gym. It's more for kids. 
Um, there's a really good one in green Bay that I'd go to every now, probably like every Friday night, I would go to green Bay. And then there's a really good one in, um, Illinois in Libertyville Mm. ultimate ninjas. So I would go there Wednesday evenings. So a lot of driving, you know, so work all day and then have to go drive a couple hours. And so where are you working at this point? At that point, okay, so season 11, I was still in Madison. So I was working as a buyer for the university bookstore. Cool. So all, That's really cool. I was buying all the non badger gifts and apparel. So all like the, you know, fun, cutesy things. Um, and then season 12 was COVID or was season 13 COVID? Now I'm forgetting. I don't know. Two of the seasons, I think I was still in Madison for season 12 and 13. I was here and I was working for Northwestern Mutual in marketing. So do you get compensated for uh, being on the show? Um, No. So season 11, how it used to be like, you would have to fly yourself out. You'd have to get your hotel. Like you'd pay for everything. Um, but now, like ever since COVID, they kind of changed it. It's like a smaller group of people now. So they pay mm-hmm. for your airfare, they pay for hotel, um, you get a stipend, and then you get money as you advance as well. And now there's also like a ninja circuit, right? During kind of during the quote unquote off season when it's not filming season. Cause I've, I, you know, did you ever get involved in that? Yeah. So there's a bunch of different competitions that go on. I do not do them. I probably should. And I always say that I'm like, yeah, yeah, I should, I should probably do that. But I just never do. I don't know. Like, I love like the off season of just like focusing on me doing the training I want to do just kind of like listening to my body that way. And when I get the call, that's when I kind of take it. Ramp up. Yeah. What's the training that you like to do? I love, um, so I lift three days a week, three to four days a week. Um, but I like to change it up. So I do a lot of maybe like two days a week. I do workout classes. Um, and then the other days I like to just go into open gym and, you know, back squats. I like to do, you know, I, I kind of do full body hits every time I'm doing lifts. What kind, so, what kind of classes okay. do you like? Like what, what I, that, that's fascinating too. Cause you know, like, I don't yeah. know, but I don't know about you, Burn. like my, my wife goes to classes six days a week. She loves the classes. So what, what kind of classes are you into? They're kind of like circuits. Like, I don't know how to describe them, but they're, they're normally always full body circuits, like pretty quick. Like there's not much break in between. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I really enjoy those as well. I'm a big orange theory fan. Oh yeah. So I've never been there, but I know a lot of people that go and we have a great downtown here. Yeah. I love it. Okay. Um, is it Shorewood? Is that the one downtown? No, there's actually, I, there probably is one in Shorewood, but there's one right in the third ward too. The one in Shorewood, I think is owned by a, a player sister, like a guy I played football oh, with. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I'm pretty oh. sure. Cause I used to go, I love it. Nice. Um, did you ask Matt, you asked who? No, I didn't. I didn't hear what you said. No, I didn't. Um, I didn't ask who. Wait. So, so Tara, I know we're running out of time. I, I have to ask you about, you know, one with all your accolades and and the Ninja Warrior stuff and all these things, mm-hmm. with name, image, likeness, the NIL stuff, getting paid in college. How much do you think that would have affected like your life for those four or five years? Honestly, I don't know. Like I think about that because there were a lot of different opportunities. I came across of like brands wanting to send me stuff to promote and I, I couldn't do it. Right. Right. Like at the time I couldn't promote anything like even so team Ninja warrior college madness that we won. I couldn't even accept the prize money. Who accepted the prize money. So my teammates got their, their piece of it, but I couldn't even sign. I couldn't donate it. I couldn't, I couldn't sign my name on the sheet of paper. Oh, that's so sad. But like, there's things like that. I'm just like, oh, I'm still so salty about. <laughs> so I think like, I would be too. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I mean, it's hard to say, but like, I did have brands reach out and want to send me stuff to promote. See, I, f- I, I find um, one, I think it's great that we have this now, right. For, for yeah, individuals yeah. like you who, but for people who, 
had great careers yeah. and look, they sold my jersey at the at the um at the university bookstore. bookstore. Dude, I walked by Lids, you know, the hat was on State Street. Yeah. And we walked, we looked in and they had a hat that said 45 on it. Yeah. And I was like, who the hell's hat is this? I don't know. So I walked in and on the back of it, it said Bernstein. And I'm like, oh what? You guys yeah. are making money off of yeah. I mean, my my parents, you know, we they got them all, they paid for them all, but <laughs> I'm like, this is so grimy. No, right. was, I didn't have any, not many people are like, Hey, you know, pr- use my product, but I find that it's, it's really, it just sucks. Cause someone to your stature could have used that one to make money, yeah. you know, before you were, n- you know, like now almost being not an athlete, it sucks that we could have monetized the yeah. time we were. Yeah. Um, and I feel like someone like you would have made a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to say, but like, I think like, yeah, I would have made something. <laughs> Wait, what are you? I, you definitely would have. I mean, to go on American Ninja Warrior, they, they would have had to pay you, and then right. I mean That's that so everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what right. brand would? What brand would you be like, man? I'm so pumped to just be. That's one of my favorite questions to ask. Like, what you know, back in the like, if you had nil back when you were at UW, like, what brand would you be like? Oh, oh my god. god, like this is so awesome! I would love to promote their stuff for any reason. Oh, that's a good question. I mean, you said you're into fashion, so I would imagine it'd be some sort of fashion thing. I would probably pick like a athletic brand though, like an athleisure brand, maybe. Mm. Like right now I'm a partner with Cuts. I don't know if you've heard of Cuts. No. No. So like, I mean, that one would be cool, but like Lululemon or Athleta, like those would probably be really cool. But what's Cuts? Yeah, what's Cuts? Cuts is like, it's more of like, work leisure. Um, they don't promote themselves as like a fitness brand. Like they don't want to promote like you wearing the stuff in the gym. Um, actually this t-shirts cuts. Um, but it's very much like high quality basics. Gotcha. Like you can dress it up, you can dress it down type of thing. You should look at nice. it. I'm like actually that. looking at it right now. Great. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking great. at it now. Oh, it's cool. So it's like, it's like just nicer brand, yes. like, uh, t-shirts and, and, whatever where yeah, you pants, want that kind of thing it, it really is like buttery soft like it's really nice <laughs> material it's very soft i, I love think we might soft. have to get them to sponsor the podcast okay yeah Dude, yes we, we, get some merch <laughs> we, we, we can make some we can make some podcast merch at uh w- w- with cuts a little collab i like that idea so, uh, so so what are you doing now because we we connected through aj taylor and adam albrecht who's yes. from my who's from my hometown i know you're working at the weaponry so tell us, it looks, how'd you get to where you are now in sort of your post Ninja Warrior career? Yes. So I graduated. Um, I actually met Adam right away when I graduated. I met him at a, um, a track reunion at Bratz. So I walk in, he's the first guy that I talked to. Like I walk in, he's like, oh, you're Taylor. Like he kind of had been following, you know, some of the track people. Um, so we had a conversation and since then he had been my mentor for like a few years, um, while I was working at the bookstore, while I was working at Northwestern mutual. And then in 2020, I believe he reached out and he's like, Hey, like I have a cool opportunity for you. So I started working, um, with him as a contractor, um, for one of his clients, I was doing social media stuff. Cause he didn't, his agency didn't have they didn't do social media for clients yet. Um, so I kind of took that over a little bit and, um, did that part time and it went really well. I did that for a year. And then he's like, Hey, like, what do you think about working for me full time? So I started working with him last November of 2021. 2021. Yeah. I'm like, how's it 2023? Um, but yeah, so now I've been with him full time for a little over a year. And it's been awesome. And so what's your experience like in social media? Like, how do you, I mean, cause you have a huge social media following, like obviously that's, you know, part due, that's due to your success and everything like that. What, you know, if a, like, how did you get into like wanting to be specializing in social media and be like, for me, who is terrible at social media, you know, and trying to grow a podcast brand here. Um, what advice do you have for someone like me? Because I'm going to pick your brain for expertise. Yeah, it's really a lot of keeping up with the everything changing. Like socials changing like daily, it seems like lately. Like it's it's kind of like keeping up with all that. It's it's challenging for sure. 
Um, but I'm just interested in it. So it's, it's fun for me, you know, to explore different things, try different things. Um, and then when Adam approached me to, you know, work as a contractor for this client, like, I don't know, I was like, that sounds awesome. Like I'm definitely interested in social media and all that. Um, so that's kind of where it took off for me. Um, cause I, I didn't major in it. I didn't like, I just had my own, you know, social page, my personal page. Um, but I learned a lot just from working with that one client and it's really just practice and playing around with it and just keeping up with the trends and, you know, new changes on social. What's your favorite social media platform? Probably Instagram. Instagram. I, I have not gotten into TikTok. I'm terrified of TikTok. Yeah. I like watching TikToks. You know, you could sit there for hours just like <laughs> I, all the emotions. Like <laughs> I, I, I saw, I think I saw a, a tweet. I was like, well, I, I, this feels very appropriate. Like I watched TikToks two weeks later on Instagram reels, like a real adult. So, uh. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, yeah. okay, well, that, that's kind of me. But um, yeah, so what are you sort of, what are your future goals? What are your future plans right now? Like, what do you, where do you want to be in five years? I know that's a very like corporate interview question, but like, you know, yeah. what are your goals for the next five to 10 years? Wow, what a question. Um, I don't know, definitely grow more in this role with the weaponry. Um, there's a lot of growth that can happen, like acquire new clients and just like keep learning about it. Um, so definitely that. And then personally, so I also have a photography business. I do yeah. weddings, couples, families, all that lifestyle. Um, so grow that a little bit too. Um, get more clients, more you know, weddings a year. Um, when did you start photography? So I started photography. I got a camera for my 21st birthday. So that's when I started playing around with it. Um, got and a then concussion I, in a camera for your yeah, 21st birthday. Camera, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah. That's so I kept playing around with it. I took pictures for my friend's engagement and they loved them. People loved them. Then I started getting asked to do other people's engagement pictures. And then I turned into weddings and yeah, lots of opportunity with it. That's great. Well, you officially have your 9,799th follower. Oh, yay. <laughs> 10k here soon that's the goal uh good for, uh, 10k i have that's no incredible. idea how many followers i are that's, that's incredible, incredible. Thank oh you. my god and imagine what you could do with 10,000 followers yeah. um let me see what i look like just to compare notes and i've been on it for longer yeah. uh we're old burning we're I have old. 1690 oh, on my way to two g's <laughs> one day yeah. and my person in my personal profile is private so i, I you know oh. just, <laughs> <laughs> because because I'm shy. So oh, um, I, I I just think you would have made so like we all would have made so much money in this day and age, and it uh, kind of sucks. I know, I know for sure. But we gotta look at the positives. You're doing great. Right. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for coming. This has been enlightening. Thank you for answering some of my meathead dumb questions yeah, about pole vault. Sure. But uh <laughs> this was oh, I mean it was fantastic. So I, I know Matt and I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Yeah, this it's is fantastic. So, um, you know, we we love our track people here. So make sure you are following uh, Taylor on Instagram. And uh, I, I don't know if you're on TikTok, but you're definitely on Instagram. What's your Instagram handle? Uh, Tay Ray Amon. So T-A-Y-R-A-E-A-M-A-N-N. All right. Well, and we will link to that in the show notes as oh. well. So uh, that's going to do it for us here today on Believe in Badgers. We will be back soon with... Uh, with uh, Soup Campbell uh, next week, as well as uh, we have, I think, some very, very special guests coming on uh, very soon, uh, thanks to uh, some of our friends over at Vibes Golf Club. So uh, uh, looking forward to some of those interviews. And uh, until then, uh, thanks for listening to the Believe in Badgers podcast on the Believe Podcast Network, presented by betonline.ag. And until next time, on Wisconsin. On Wisconsin. On Wisconsin.